AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldis.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. Welcome to a special cybersecurity series of the AI in Action podcast. I am your host, John Petherbridge. Today's guest is John McSweeney. John has 30 years experience in cybersecurity, based in Cork, Ireland, and a background in banking, investments, and now pharmaceutical. As well as being the innovation facilitator and lecturer at UCC, he is also an avid soccer fan. John is now the director of Active Defence for McKesson Europe. We touch upon many things in this conversation, including vulnerabilities around mergers and acquisitions. Join us now as John tells us about how he got into cybersecurity. I, I've been I've been in the game so long; it's really not so much me getting into cybersecurity. It's more when cybersecurity kind of came into me. Um, okay. Reason being was, you know, I mean, back in the day when we were designing and developing systems for, um, you know, for companies. That, you know, based mostly out of London and and, uh, and and Wall Street, there were financial institutions. You know, the cybersecurity are are not even cybersecurity. It wasn't even called cybersecurity. It was uh, it was more you know the the security of the systems would be the last consideration. So just before you'd go to production, suddenly you have to design some sort of a DMZ. Demilitarized zone that didn't even exist back then. It was like you know we just invented one and uh, and, and firewalls and, and and you know kind of built security on the fly just as you were kind of going live um, and that was probably quite uh, quite real and, and, and a pattern for a majority of developers and people that would take um, you know, technology solutions from end to end and that was where I kind of I suppose you know came out of I, I started programming at 12 um, you know had, had a computer club at school and um, you know everybody expected me to go on to, to college and study computers which I did in, in the Cork Regional Technical College um, and and you know being capable with technology basically kind of gave me a career path that you know took off basically in in the financial sector and and you know, it wasn't really until maybe five six years ago that I was contacted by a colleague of mine that I'd worked with um, in uh, in Morgan Stanley and, and he said hey man do you remember that uh, that firewall system you built for them you know would you be interested in in designing another one for HSBC and I was kind of going. Are you mad? That was like 17 years ago. He said, "Oh no, the time is really good." And uh, and so I was kind of curious, and I came back to cybersecurity in a real dedicated way. I guess about six, seven years ago, um, and, and started retraining and started focusing on, um, on on getting into the sector and and kind of moving away from um, the academic work that I was doing at, at, at University College Cork. Um, and, and it's really, it's really intriguing that, that that they have kind of married now. I mean, a lot of the academic work that I was doing looked at technology forecasting, looked at innovation, looked at um, kind of predicting where technology would go, um, and, and that has become something that is so important for me right now as a leader of information security at McKesson. Um, so the company I work for. Um, and I, I guess, you know, for any leader in, 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 in information security, you know, being able to predict where the trends are and, 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 and what's coming next is, uh, is a huge part of being successful in our role, you know? Yeah, and that's, that's the trickiest part as well. Everyone wants to know what's next. What, what, what should we be looking out for? What's over the horizon? Um, yeah. yeah, it's definitely, it's, it, every, every few months we kind of have that sort of question or there's new articles being put out. Um, so I know when we first met you, you you had your own pen a home set up pen testing lab and you're you're upskilling on that, and is that something that you've continually done over the last say like twenty years or so, or is that only when you kind of as you said when your friend reached out to you about Morgan Stanley and this opportunity came up for HSBC, is that when you kind of revived your kind of technical expertise or jumped into it a bit further? Yeah, it's a good question. So I, I guess. Yes and no is the answer. The the uh, you see, I mean, cybersecurity in terms of the technology, it, it you know it spans so much, right? So you know, you're talking about databases, you're talking about networks, you're talking about cloud, web, mobile apps, 
you know, it's, it's not just one small little sector on its own. So you, you, in order to be a fantastic cybersecurity um, professional, you need to be a constant student of the technology that's underneath um, and understanding, uh, you know, th those principles in programming and, and application development and, uh, and, and understanding the kind of the, the, the core technologies that, that cybersecurity sits above and, uh, and, and, you know, that never went away, that love of learning, that, that passion for, you know, staying ahead and, and, and staying on the, the, the innovation cycle of technology. And that gave me a huge leading edge when it came to, you know, specializing then in, in, in cyber. Now I'm at the stage, you know, in my career where, you know, leadership has become um, a huge part of what I do. Uh, and, and I focus my training in that space as opposed to the more technical stuff. Um, and, uh, and it's wonderful, you know, I suppose, you know, one of the, one of the, the keys for me is, uh, and the passion that I have is really built around people. Um, and um, at this stage of my career, that's become really, really clear to me that, you know, the, the fun I get in, in my role is really revolved around um, seeing people come in, uh, you know, be successful, uh, you know, become, um, become excited by uh, thwarting attacks and, uh, and defending our, our business in a meaningful yeah. way, you know, reducing down cost and loss impact of cybersecurity attacks. And, uh, and, and that kind of gives me a lot more pleasure now, I guess. And that had, that had kind of evolved as, as a technologist prior to the, uh, the cybersecurity balloon as well. You know, yeah. I would have been kind of a bit bored with fixing, fixing technology and fixing um, servers and designing and developing um, networks uh, because it was not as exciting as, as, uh, as working with people. So, you know, I think you get to a point in your career, perhaps, where the toolbox isn't as exciting anymore, uh, and you'd much better working with folk that are, 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 are better tradesmen and better craftsmen, um, you know, than me. And I, I've taken that step at this stage, where I kind of realize that uh, there are younger, better, faster um, uh, people out there and, uh, and more tuned in, perhaps, um, on the technical side of the stage uh, than me. And I'm, 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 I'm in a kind of a luxurious uh, uh, scenario where I can kind of take a step back from um, having, having a very sharp, sharp and set of tools um, and, uh, and depend on, 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 on teams of people um, you know, internationally to, to provide uh, security as a service into, uh, into McKesson. Yeah, that's, that's interesting you touched upon that because I've recently transitioned, I'm transitioning from a hands-on senior principal consultant to a little more of a leadership role now and, and to build a mm. team around me so i can kind of identify with the, the you're kind of spinning yourself in two so it's like part of you just has your muscle memory where you crack on doing what you've always done and then the other part is like well no this is a whole other it's just a whole other part to that you all other like uh, upskilling area so you said you're putting training into leadership and and how that's where you're investing your time because that's where your, your role the direction your role is taken but um how did you find the initial transition moving from being John McSweeney, the, the, the technical guy, to, to John McSweeney, the leader? It kind of happened by accident, really, you know. Okay. Um, I, you know, I think, I think a lot of it is kind of given to you by other leaders. You know, I, I, I joined, when I joined McKesson, I was very fortunate to um, become very influenced by a fantastic leader um, in the organization. And, and he really kind of... Uh, I don't know, I was able to hear him, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. You know, I, I, I was able to hear him in, in a way that I hadn't listened and, uh, to other, other leaders. And, uh, and that, that inspired me. And I really got his message. And that seemed to kind of help me um, evolve and, and kind of, you know, bring, bring, bring the philosophy and the framework, um, you know, that, that he was uh, uh, proposing um, to life. And that... You know that was all kind of uh, in the last transition where I'd come out of a, a contract role, um, a permanent TSB, um, you know, fantastically enjoyable role there. But you know, this this full time role that I took in um, in McKesson has really um, given me a fantastic new uh, a, a, a new route. And, you know, I suppose as a technologist, you you are the the kind of the eternal. You're the, the eternal student, really. You know, you you're you're on that like never-ending staircase of learning, and um, and that's something that I look for in the people that I bring into my organisation. Are you capable of sustaining learning and continual learning and have a joy from it 
um, because that's the, that's the big ask in cybersecurity. You know, that yeah. you, 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 don't, you don't get to a platform or a static position in cybersecurity and rest there. And, you know, it's kind of like when you look at bricklaying, you know, you know, I, I would have worked on building sites um, as, a, as, a, as a bricklayer, a very amateur bricklayer, I might add. Um, <laughs> you know, once you're taught bricklaying, bricklaying, you know, the bonds don't change, you know, the Flemish bond, the English bond, they are, that's how you lay bricks. And it doesn't change for the rest of your life. You know, once you've learned that, that's that. But that is not true of technology. Technology, there is a continual need to not just innovate, but to, to teach yourself to evolve and to learn. And there are some pitfalls in that space as well, um, which I learned very early on in my career, where I would have taken a vendor-specific exam. So, you know, you, you went off and, you know, the first network topology that I would have worked with, I was one of the, the earliest um, qualified engineers in Novell Networks. Um, okay. Back in the day, I, my, I was number 72. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, and, uh, and of course, you know, there were no Novell Networks anymore because in that large aquarium, the little fish get eaten by the big fish. Uh, and, you know, you had the, the, the evolution of NT and, and, uh, and, and network topology. And then, you know, we, 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 and I saw the same thing as, as well with, with data general. So DGUX, um, you know, so I would have qualified as a system administrator in that Unix uh, platform, they no longer exist. So, you know, if I gave a word of advice to folk that are listening, um, you know, vendor specific uh, certifications are probably not the greatest thing to invest in. Look for something that's a little bit more um, platform orientated uh, that is not connected to a specific um, technology, but more you know, um, along the lines of like a CEH, a certified ethical hacker, or maybe a CISP. Um, and, and, you know, th these, are, these are qualifications which would put you on a platform that are, are, are not vendor specific and, and won't end up getting diluted later on. Yeah, that, that's a good point to make. Um, you can nearly niche yourself nearly off the market if you really pursue the, the, the vendor certifications because there's always another one to go after. But uh, yeah, that, I mean, sometimes, I mean, it, it's, fair, it's fair call, John. I mean, sometimes it makes sense. You know, obviously, if you yeah, are... The CCIE is, a, obviously, I don't think yeah. that's going to be going anywhere and that's, that's super impressive to have. Yeah, and and you know there are there are definite vendor trends. I mean, you know when you when you look at at, at next generation firewalls and you looked at next generation, um, you know NAS and and and, and you know the uh, intrusion protection systems. You know there 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 are companies crying out for uh, people that are certified in those, whether it's you know Checkpoint or Polo Alps or whatever. You know it's there are there are there is work available. You know if you qualify in those specific, specific uh, vendor. Um, the certification routes but you know after looking at back in 30 years we, you know you will become extinct yeah and as you say you, you kind of end up perhaps um you know investing uh, a little bit of time wisely in in, in looking at um certifications that are, are more platform -based. yeah so that, that that's just, just seems practical to be honest um yeah. and I, we were talking a little bit earlier about seeing uh, onset trends and what what was going to be coming up in the next few months and so forth and it's all it's all about predicting what's going to happen and people are always interested in that sort of a conversation we were yeah, only yeah. chatting about it a couple of weeks ago and you mentioned um security around specifically mergers and acquisitions didn't you yeah well it's a yeah you see a lot of it is about kind of the the rattlesnake effect right so you know a rattlesnake shakes its tail and attracts in its prey and when when our business grows or when businesses grow in general and um, something very similar happens in the press the noise that is made in the press um you know around a merger and an acquisition uh, you know mergers and acquisitions are traditionally how large multinational companies tend to grow and even yeah. smaller um, enterprise level companies as well but, but not so much and what happens in that that area is you know not only do the stock stock markets get very excited about what's happening because there's an immediate impact um around the the, the actual share prices of the companies involved in an alleged merger and, and acquisition but also advanced persistent threat groups are now looking at that noise and seeing is there an opportunity is there an opportunity to get in the middle of the merger and uh, and see if they can uh, um, ex expedite a, a financial uh, gain. So you know, it, you know, financially motivated attackers are are very very real. Um, and and where where can they be effective? Well, they can be very effective in a merger, considering you know one party doesn't really know the other party in terms of the people. 
they, they, they might under, they might understand each other from a domain level and, uh, and because of that they end up being vulnerable to this type of an attack um, and that's certainly a, a trend that we're seeing um, and not only that that trend I mean that that's very closely related I think as well to um, an older type of threat which would be you know in relation to third parties and third parties of third parties um, you know we have the the, the, the a very, a very famous uh, attack many years ago in Target, the retail outlet in, in the States, yeah. Um, yeah. Where, where a third party and its vulnerability uh, in terms of credentials. Um, you know, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was a, an air conditioning engineer's um, uh, portal, basically, that, that got exploited and, uh, and led to that attack. And we're, we're seeing that as well as a, another touch point that, you know, hackers um, are, are focused on third parties and, uh, you know, using third parties to get to their target. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and that's certainly uh, a, very, a very interesting trend. What's, what, actually, John, you know, what's really interesting in this space for me is yeah. not so much, well, I mean, predicting is really important, but how we arrive at predictions and the, the, the pieces of the puzzle in terms of looking at technology forecasting. Um, yeah, like the fact finding beforehand to kind yeah, of see. Yeah, where yeah, we're yeah. At. yeah, like yeah. How, how, how can you predict this, right? Mm. So, and and it, sometimes people look at it and say, oh, that's the, you know, well, you know where, where does this, this, kind of, this knowledge come from and why are you focusing on this space? It's really simple. It's really not as complex as you think. It's where are we being attacked? You know, so where are we actually seeing? Um, incidents and the trends in our incidents. So we look back on what's happening historically to look forward to what's going to come, right? So we have yeah, to focus our attention there. And it, it's, it's really as clear and as simple as that. And as, as we kind of take that kind of a very practical approach, looking at, uh, at the heat map in terms of, of the types of incidents that we're responding to, um, we also start to kind of look a little bit more at our organization as well. What we're seeing, I think, within organization structures is quite a big shift in, 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 in the way that companies are looking at cybersecurity. Um, and, uh, you know, McKesson is, is no different. And what we're seeing is a kind of a push away from the, the kind of plan, build and run um, structures to a more, you know, innovation management style approach. Um, and and that's very intriguing to see cybersecurity really now interfacing and getting much closer to our business. Getting, you know, when I when I discussed earlier that that kind of trend we had long ago when technologists were the you know the, the last port to call. Oh, we're going live on Monday and Friday evening. You're you're trying to figure out how you're going to set up credentials and passwords so that your customers are are going to have some element of security when they connect in your new new fancy reporting system. Um, that trend is is also changing radically, and I think it's because cybersecurity is becoming so integrated into the way that the you know the, the way that digital business is done. Um, yeah, and we really you know I'm I'm seeing this from a, a structural point of view, um, and you know this concept of cybersecurity getting closer to the business. It's actually becoming a business. You know, it's like it's integrating so far into the products at this stage that. Um, you know that companies will make decisions uh, to get an advantage if if they if they see a cybersecurity maturity in a particular product. So to get, kind of bring that back into into context, if we're doing mergers and acquisitions um, and we're also kind of evolving technology and innovating at the same time, um, you know the company will will make a decision to jump ahead if it sees an opportunity to merge with. A, a provider that has um, that has uh, you know a, a secured platform um, already developed, and we've seen that recently with McKesson and uh, and and uh, and Echo, uh, um, a web-based um, uh, medical delivery company um, in the UK, uh, and and you know this is an example I think of of where the mergers and acquisition and the the technical uh, prowess. Uh, and and the cybersecurity element of that is, are coming together. So it's a very intriguing um, space, uh, you know, not just from the basic bread and butter side of uh, of cybersecurity, but this fundamental shift in the way that organisations are, are are designing themselves um, and uh, and evolving their their functional um, their functional structures and and their organisations around um, you know building uh, cybersecurity talent into the, you know the, the the decision making at business level. 
Yeah, it really is. It's I've even seen in the last few years um, doing security for about six years or so now. Um, there's even just there's there's new positions that are just even come up in the last few years, like DevSecOps people that have come in that are creating all these new products. But this critical stage is before they even get pushed onto a security re- architect to review. There's already security competence around the software and the development and the operation side. Um, so it is becoming a much more granular level as opposed to an afterthought before, like you said, Friday even before it goes live on a Monday. Um, that's yeah, it, it is. It's it's a it's a good time to be upskilling in security, um, and it's it's a it's it's a good time to have an association in security um, because there's there's just so much knowledge out there, knowledge sharing, and there's 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 so much more to um, different career paths you can take now as opposed to when you start doing it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, when I when I look across the, the, the you know the the talent pool that we've got in terms of of, of talented developers, you know, machine, yeah, machine yeah. folk that are busy in in there and and the uh, artificial intelligence crew, and you know, we've got you know a, a huge amount of development talent, developers, um, you know, working in and around our application security, our threat and vulnerability management, um, you know, so. There's there's an endless need for talent in the space as well. I mean, because it's so broad, it touches so much. As I, you know, I mentioned earlier, that we 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 actually have to kind of structure ourselves in in terms of of the way that we learn as well. So you know, what we find um, particularly across our security operations folk is that there's so much to cover. You know, that, that the blanket doesn't stretch far enough in terms of the, the technical prowess. So we tend to break it down into zones and then you know offer our security analysts the, the opportunity to specialize in specific areas. Um, and then they work across the security operation centers um, in those zones. So those zones will be things like network, would be like a cloud, a web, app, a data analytics, um, forensics, uh, cyber threat intelligence. And, and in that way, it kind of, kind of takes this huge big pyramid that can fall down on top of you um, and break it into bricks so that you can kind of focus on one piece of it and then you know become specialized in that area and then move on to the next and have a team of people that are, are, are capable in that particular zone. Um, so the zone model has certainly helped us, I think, kind of uh, break down the, the task of having um, having knowledge and, and, and kind of focusing uh, you know, the, the structure around how you educate yourself and develop your cybersecurity skills. Yeah, that that does make perfect sense. It can be overwhelming when you have all these different yeah. areas and all Absolutely. these different types of vulnerabilities and all these different types of attacks. Um, where yeah, there's just so many different silos within security you can jump into. Um, yeah, no, that that that's, that's what makes perfect sense. From from your perspective, we're going to wrap this up shortly. But um, what do you? What gets you excited now about cybersecurity? You've been you've been involved in it for so many years. What if you're talking to someone that was contemplating getting into it right now? How would you go about getting them excited about it the way you're excited about it? Yeah, it's a great question, man. Uh, I suppose you know there's the, the there's that whole employability side of it. You know, um, uh, it's 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 one of those areas that has that um, you know the, the, the sound bite of I don't know, there's a million jobs unfulfilled and then, you know, six months later, it's 1.5 million jobs globally that are not filled and then there's 2 million jobs and by the time we get to 2025, there'll be so many jobs, you know, so so you have that whole kind of employability, um, you know, thing locked in. Yeah. And then, you know, there's also the reward. I mean, you know, financially, it's it's a very lucrative space to work in in terms of technology. And that's because it's tricky, right? It's 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 a, it's a difficult paradigm, um, you know, cybersecurity stuff. The rewards are, are fantastic as well. There's, you know that that's that's held out um, by 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 you know surveys, salary surveys, and, and whatnot. And then you know the thing that really excites me about it is you know the fact that you can impact people's lives by what you're doing. You know, so when I think about what I do at McKesson, McKesson deliver medicine into hospitals. Uh, they deliver medicine out into um, pharmacy networks across 13 countries in Europe and, and Canada and America. And, you know, having that supply of medicine to citizens of countries is very important. Um, and if it was taken down by a, a group of financially motivated hackers, then, you know, I have failed in what I'm doing. So, you know, when, when I distill it all the way down to uh, one of our patients sitting in a bed, 
and not being able to get their medicine, then you know I have a responsibility to make sure that 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 line of of supply is maintained and operational. Um, and so in a, in a in a way, what I do on a daily basis has a, an impact to our end client, our end customer, which is somebody who's sick and vulnerable. So you know the, there are really fantastic jobs in cybersecurity that can give added value in terms of the meaning for what you do on a daily basis as well, which holistically can kind of make you feel better, feel a bit better about what you're doing in the world. Um, and uh, and so there there are fantastic. That's always good. There are fantastic opportunities in cybersecurity to take roles and understand what you're doing um, from that higher level, right? Perfect answer, John. Um, John McSweeney, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it and hopefully you get to, get to see you again soon. Absolutely, John. Looking forward to it. AI in Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all its members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career, and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.